John 7, 38, 39, whoever believes in me, as the scripture has said, streams of living water will flow from within him. Now, the wonderful thing about John is he gives us a little footnote here, tells us what Jesus was talking about. He says, by this he meant the Holy Spirit, whom those who believed in him were later to receive, for up to that point the Spirit had not been given since Jesus had not yet been glorified. I love the fact he said that, because it doesn't leave us pondering what are these streams of living water. It is indeed the presence of the Holy Spirit in my life. The baptism of the Holy Spirit is a gift. It is not because I've earned it fasted enough. I've been a good preacher, been a good boy. It's not like, can I say this? Father God is not like Santa Claus who's looking around, see who's been naughty and who's been nice. And if you've been nice, we'll give you a gift of the Holy Spirit. He's not like that. He's indiscriminate. I mean, pastorally, I look around sometimes at people and think, Lord, how could you possibly give someone that gift? Do you not know them as well as I do? The bizarre thing is he loves us and therefore wants to pour out his spirit upon us. I need to be realized that the spirit actually already lives in me. Romans 8, 15 and 16 tell me that when I became a Christian, I was given the spirit, a seal placed on my life by which I cry, Abba, Father. The spirit's already in us. If we're born again, newsflash, he's already got you. But as Pentecostals, we understand from Scripture there is something else. That there can be secondary and third and fourth and fifths and continual experiences and outpourings of the Holy Spirit into our life. For empowering God's timing, we need to be open and receptive. God's timing isn't always ours. Like me that night, I stood there, Lord, fill me with the Spirit. Everyone's filled with the Spirit. I wonder if he didn't just because I was jealous. I'd taken my eyes off of what was really important. I just wanted to be like, you know, so-and-so who was getting filled with the Spirit. Oh, Lord, make me like Gareth. That'd be good. Slightly quirky and clever. (laughs) Shame on you for not believing he's clever. (laughs) Worst thing is Sonia's crying now. She's just got that... (laughs) Don't look at someone else say, Lord, I want to be like them. Look at Jesus. Say, Lord, I just want to be like you. What are we doing this morning? We're polishing a hinge, if you know what that means. That vision the other week. We're polishing a hinge. And baptism of the Holy Spirit is not a one-off experience. Some will say, well, I was filled in 1933, and that was good enough for me. I have a car. I fill it up often. I have a body. I fill that up often. I'm a man of the Holy Spirit. I get filled often. When Peter, uh, John... uh, Sorry, I'll go to my notes and I'll remember who it is. Ephesians, that'd be Paul. Ephesians 5, 18. <laughs> it's been a long sermon, isn't it? He says this, Do not get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery. Instead, be filled with the Holy Spirit. He deliberately uses the analogy of people getting drunk here because it's something they do repeatedly. And in fact, in the Greek, we discover there's a little device there. And I can't remember the name of the device, but it basically means an ongoing filling. In other words, keep getting filled with the Spirit. 